Hey everybody, um, how are you today? Uh, Mark Schultz here. Uh, I have a, a guest on this uh, video snippet that we're doing today on digital transformation. It's Jerry Cutler. Hi Jerry, how are you today? Hey Mark, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Hey, I'm doing good, Jerry. Thank you. Hey, Jerry and I have worked together in the past and you may have seen some of the other videos that we've done here recently. And uh, Jerry has a long history of operations um, at airlines and uh, did an airline startup at one point in time and uh, worked at Boeing as a manu at the manufacturer. And that's really where Jerry and I met was uh, during that time when we both worked at Boeing. Um, but Jerry brings a lot of experience to the table and I'm excited to have some discussion with you today about digital transformation. I got a few questions for you, okay, Jerry? Okay. All right. Let's roll. Hey, listen, um, we've done a lot of things together. We've even traveled internationally together and we've, uh, we've visited some airlines and we've seen some really interesting things. But um, you know, on this, uh, on this topic today of digital transformation, I wanted to talk about process, all right? And uh, process, and how, that, how does that relate to digital transformation? So the question I have for you is, is that when someone says process, what are we really talking about in the context of digital transformation? What does process mean? So I, I, I think about the operators themselves of the digital transformative tools, right? It's, it's all kinds of tools, uh, whether it's paper or electronic. Um, it, it requires some type of guidance on what you're going to do with that paper or with that tool. And so uh, it's, I guess you could look at them as two sides of the same coin. You can have tools, and if no one's trained on them, they will be really nice paperweights if they're tangible. Um, and uh, if you just have process, um, you still have potential major gaps um, if you don't have the right tools. And the example I, I, you and I have talked about before is, is using a whiteboard in an airline operation to control um, deferred items on an aircraft. Uh, it's not, it, it's not very conducive to communication. So there may yeah, be a, not efficient. There's a there's, yeah. yeah, there's a tool there, or there's a process there, but they're not necessarily the right match that, you know, communication okay. process needs to use the right tool in the right way to be effective. Yeah. And, and that combination is what is, is able to, allows you to, to improve your operation. Yeah. So Jerry, you know, um, one of the things I did when we were in the consulting business at Boeing was I was involved in some of the uh, 787 entry into service activities. And a really good example of that is, is that, you know, people had processes for maintaining their fleet prior to 787 entry into service. And one of the things that we had to do is we had to map out the processes that they were using on maintaining or servicing the aircraft. And then this new technology comes in and then the processes had to be remapped, which said, now what do you do? Because you're forced to use different process due to the new technology. And then you would bring out the new process for supporting of that new aircraft, that 787. So when I think of process, I think of, hey, we had a was condition, which was supporting some circumstance, like maybe one type of airplane you know, before. We bring in new technology, and now the process has to change to support the technology that's there, all right? And so I kind of have this vision of process and technology work together to produce the proper result. Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. And in and, and many of our customers, what we start with is, is kind of a upstream from, from process or higher elevation from process. In other words, we map out their functions. The functional flow of an operation allows you to talk about the operation without being clear down in the weeds telling people push this button, push this button, but allow you to get a feel for what their processes are. And one reason we do that is that, that if you talk about the function, you can talk about the tools that are used within the function, uh, once again, without being too specific and getting into the weeds. It also allows you to map challenges. And by having that information, this function, this set of tools, this set of challenges, it allows you to examine and say, um, how, can we, how can we resolve these challenges? Are these the right tools? Are these the right functions? And below the functions, the right processes. And uh, I was involved in some of the same things on the 787 where uh, I was mapping out the ground handling uh, processes uh, for supporting the aircraft. 
And we encountered the same thing. We encountered, well, gee, there's now a panel that needs to be moved to just service this one thing. Didn't exist in, in previous aircraft in the same way. And so um, we started, we had started at the top level of, you know, here are the baseline functions that need to happen. Now let's get to the tools and the processes. And as we drilled down deeper, we found those challenges that I'm mm. talking about. Well, gee, I've got to have a special tool to get in through this port to do this, to resolve this problem. So that meant that we had to not only document the process, but look at the training that was going to be required that was to reinforce the distinct differences between the old aircraft and the new aircraft. Same thing in, in a factory, same thing in the airline operation itself. You know, here's, here's the baseline activity, but how is it gonna change as we change technology, as we change operating philosophy, as we change uh, even manpower? You know, what's going to change? And when you bring about change, then you have to bring about changes to the processes the how you're doing it the training to do it and otherwise the example i mentioned to you a while ago was you know you implement a tool a software tool for example but you don't train your people on it and therefore the people the users of the tool um, simply comment well the tool doesn't do this this and this and it's not the tool doesn't it's that they haven't been trained to use it so they have to have that they go hand in hand, technology and training. You can't just implement a computer and then walk away. So Jerry, in your business, um, uh, I see you doing these kind of things, is that uh, what is it that you specifically offer to people in your business um, around this area of process, functions, tools, challenges? What, what is it you do with people around this area? I think one of the most important pieces is, is and different, different names for it. Process re-engineering is what it was called when I first started doing it uh, years ago. Lean is, is what Boeing calls it. But it's, it's process improvement is one of the most important pieces. The reason I talk about starting at a function level is because it gives you a framework to drill down into processes. Um, it gives you, that, that framework gives you the structure of the operation without getting too detailed, but enables you to go detailed and keep in mind the context of the entire operation. So what we can do is go in, map out at a function level, and, and quite frankly, at any level, a carrier can take it on themselves and say, okay, we can take it from here. And I had one carrier that, that I worked with um, that did exactly that. On day three of a five-day workshop, the, their leader came and said, we understand what you've been leading us through. Can we facilitate the rest of this workshop? Oh, that's and have you guide us, there, isn't it? That's it's really absolutely, a <laughs> absolutely. And yeah. and I will tell you that that carrier is my poster child, um, in that they took it to the appropriate level of detail, they identified challenges, they they ranked those challenges, they determined what was needed to resolve the challenges to provide the capabilities which was a combination of process, which meant training, and tools, and they launched nine projects, oh, and they completed nine projects. Yeah. And I did a second workshop for them five months later, and they launched more projects. So, you know, at any of those steps that I just mentioned, a carrier can say, I understand it now. Can you just coach me, and I'll do it myself, because I've got resources. So, um, we love to go in, Take the top level look, help put the framework in place. You know, it's it's a look at the function level, maybe a little bit of the task level, but but starting at the function level with the tools and and the challenges and the training and the work guides, all those various things that lead to a, an effective operation. And I've had several carriers, in fact, here in the U.S. as well as offshore, um, who said it's amazing. That in and we tend to target a, a, a one week workshop for this top level of, of understanding the, the operations health study type of, of understanding. Um, in, in a week, um, I've had 
CEOs say, how did you, how did you get all this information about our operation in really what was four days of, of yeah. workshops and interviews and observations and that type of thing. Process. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, absolutely is. And, and it gives a carrier something to work from. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it isn't, you know, it's back to when you've seen one, one airline, you've seen one airline. Every airline is different. They all do the same thing. Everybody loads airplanes, unloads airplanes, fuels airplanes, you know, has tickets. Everybody has these pieces, but how you load and unload, how you fuel, how you manage your fuel. You talked about weight and balance. I've had the same exact experience, paper, and then drive it for 20 minutes to get it to the airplane. Yeah. You know, every carrier does it differently. Yeah. You know, um, Jerry, on this subject of digital transformation, uh, you know, getting the people in the, uh, the, the people in the company engaged is a, a critical part of success of digital transformation, all right? Companies that are successful in, in achieving the transformation of their business, digital transformation of their business, are those which engage their employees and they own it and with great enthusiasm move it forward. And so I can see that you have been very successful in your business in creating that kind of an environment for people. So um, if somebody wanted to reach out to you and have you help them in their business to help to achieve that, how would they get in touch with you? Got a couple of ways to do that. Uh, one is my website. It is eaviationadvisors.com or ping me on LinkedIn. I'm on it every day. Okay, awesome. That's great. Hey, listen, um, for all of you out there watching today, uh, digital transformation, one of the most important parts of this is the engagement of people. Um, and when I say the most important part, what I'm saying is, is that those companies which have been successful in digitally transforming themselves have been successful in engaging people. Some of the things that Jerry has done in his business have been very successful in getting people to engage in this process of digital transformation. And so you should reach out to him and continue this conversation and see if you guys can't partner and look at doing some things together. Jerry, thanks for um, this uh, time we've spent together here today. Really informative. Um, I like the information that you brought to the table. Thanks, Mark. All right. Hey, everybody out there, uh, fair winds and following seas, and have a great day. Bye now.